hi guys thanks for tuning in so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you my step by step process of applying for a Schengen study visa at the german embassy in nairobi so stay tuned and in case you have not subscribed to this channel and you are watching me right now please consider doing so by hitting the red button right below this video and also don't forget to give this video a like don't forget to leave your comment down below of any questions or anything that you would like to ask me and also don't forget to share this video in case it turns out to be useful to somebody else so yeah let's get on with the video so of course the first thing that i had to do once i decided to apply for a visa at the german embassy in nairobi was to get vaccinated and i know that that may sound cliche but some people are still ignorant about getting vaccinated but what you need to know is that if you're planning to travel outside your country then vaccination is mandatory you have to get both doses or the complete dose of whichever vaccination you are going for so the second thing was for me to make an online appointment for the visa interview because that is something that can be very challenging especially during this um corona pandemic period it's very difficult to get appointments once once they are open they are taken up very fast so you have to be extra vigilant and once there is an appointment in the near future then you have to book that when i made my application or when i made my appointment i had to wait for six weeks to get a slot so that is something that you just have to do whether or not you have gathered all the documents that you require for your application and then thirdly of course was now for me to start gathering all the documents and the first document that i really needed to obtain was um of course the school acceptance form or the school enrollment form or something like that so that meant that i had to go into the internet and check for like um, available schools and you can check nationwide if like you don't have a specific city that you want to go to or to study at but uh, in my case at that time i wanted to go to hamburg because i had a friend there so i thought okay it would be nice to study in a city that at least i know somebody so i chose hamburg and of course it meant going online and looking for language schools in hamburg it's something very simple so at that time because it was uh, towards maybe the end of the year the school that i found was offering a 50 percent discount which meant that I had to pay 50% less and I just had to jump for it. And once I paid my fees, they sent me an, uh, like an, enroll an enrollment form and asked me whether I needed to apply for a visa. So again, if you need to apply for visa, there are specific documents that uh, you need to obtain or at least a document that uh, you need to obtain that will sh uh, contain your name, your passport number, um, the period of study, when you'll be starting your, your, your study and when you'll be ending your study, the number of hours per week because all these things are very specific and if the numbers of hours per week do not like uh, match with the language study then it might like compromise your visa application so in case you're in doubt you can go and refer to the um, language study visa because there is a specific visa for language study and let me just pause and explain that if you want to study for a longer period because uh, like a crash program may not be applicable or may not suit everyone learning german in three months i'm telling you it's not the easiest thing and many people end up repeating one level severally so it it turns out to be like a waste of money so if you are somebody who is just like you want to study german for like a comfortable duration of time then you definitely should not apply for a Schengen uh, study visa because that only limit you to three months you should apply for a national visa uh, that will they will give you a visa that has a duration of nine months and you can extend it to one year okay so i was talking about now applying for a visa and the duration of course had to indicate that the study period was not gonna exceed 90 days because again uh, if it exceeds 90 days then you cannot qualify for that visa it's already beyond the duration that is allowed for a change in visa to be issued 
The next thing that I want to share with you in a little bit of detail is uh, the required documents and I'm going to be mentioning them and then just sharing with you like maybe how I went about obtaining those documents. So the first one was to fill out an online application form and um, I know that there is an option for printing out a PDF form and then filling out it out by hand but um, I think on the website is clearly mentioned that use the online form. You need to populate the document online and then print it out once it's duly filled. You have to fill it out completely, print it out because the one that you print out that you fill online has a barcode so that when they scan it, then they can just automatically obtain your, uh, your information online. Do not forget to sign it and to date it. Secondly, I had to obtain uh, biometric photos that are not older than six months of course and um, there are so many places that you can go and take these photos from but for me for the many times that I have applied for a visa I have always gone to reinsurance plaza on the ground floor there is a studio there that they understand the like the dimensions that apply for like uh, visa applications for different countries so that's what I did I obtained like four but I only needed to use two and then of course you have to have a passport because you will need to provide or to submit your original passport and for Kenyan nationals at the moment they are only accepting the new generation passport the digital one so if you still have the old one before you even start your visa application process you need to update it and obtain the new one so luckily mine um my old one got lost before I went to Qatar so right before I went to Qatar I had to obtain the new generation one and it's still valid up to 2028 so that was already sorted out at that point and then you also need to provide a copy of your passport biodata page you know that page that has your information your name date of birth uh, and in case you have ever applied and received a Schengen visa before, then you also need to make a copy of that Schengen visa. And also in case you ever obtained a residency permit in Germany, you also have to provide a copy of that residency permit. And that is just for them to see that you did not violate any previous visas or residence permits that were issued to you. The other requirement was proof of personal regular income. Or means of subsistence I had uh, some savings in the bank and uh, the money had stayed in the bank for more than six months at the time of my application and I don't know the thing that really helped me to let that money stay there was because of course I was saving for the Canadian process and you have to have money in the bank so it just happened that I had money in the bank that I had not touched for a while and that was very helpful because um it had like only like the bank statement that I provided only had two transactions like uh I think two withdrawals something like that so that was important for them to prove that that money actually belongs to me because it has been there I have transacted uh, because the problem that arises when it comes to people providing bank statements is that they take like a lump sum and then they put it into their account suddenly and that raises eyebrows or like of the that the source of that money and whether it is going to be available to you uh, when you get to the to your destination country so you really if you put a lump sum like in your account you really will have to provide proof of the source of that money and that actually it is it's gonna be available to you and just uh, another pointer for the bank statement I know that you can obtain a bank statement online but um, for the purposes of visa application even if you print out your bank statement online you still need to take it to the bank for them to satisfy it as a true copy of the original because they will need whatever amount or whatever balance is showing in that bank statement they will need to verify it they will need to go into your account to verify that indeed that balance is there and then satisfy it so that is very important don't go with a uh, like a copy of your bank statement that is not certified the other requirement is of course proof of travel medical insurance 
and it should cover the entire duration of your stay. So if you're going to stay for maybe 90 days and the insurance only covers 88 days, no visa for you or probably maybe they might just issue for the number of days that the uh, insurance is valid for. So if you're applying for three months and your insurance is only valid for one month, likely you will not even get that visa. So that is something that you really need to check. And something else is that don't just go to any insurance provider. If you check on the German embassy website, uh, you'll find a list of approved uh, insurance providers by the German embassy. So you can select one of them. And uh, of course, because those people already know the requirements that are needed by the German embassy, so any of their insurance will be acceptable and you also just need to compare because their prices also their premiums are different and their terms and conditions are also different so also do just do your research i don't remember exactly which one i used but i just found it on i think i used a third party which was pesa baza so they're the ones that now were linking me to uh, the insurance provider they suggested a couple of them and then I ended up choosing the one that worked for me so you can check out Pesa Bazaar contact them and then they will be able to guide you on matters re uh, related to uh, German German travel medical insurance and just make sure that the insurance has a minimum cover of 30,000 euros and is valid for all the Schengen states so I didn't find those other requirements as challenging as when it got to the point of proving like uh, my employment status because you either have to indicate whether you are employed, self-employed or unemployed and of course when it comes to unemployment then it becomes a little bit tricky and for me I wouldn't say that at that time I was unemployed because I was freelancing, I was doing some online jobs here and there and not like many online jobs i was doing like uh, online tutoring uh for ielts so i was teaching english i had uh, some some couple of students i think from may way until somewhere like september so by the time i was going to make my application i had even stopped tutoring in september so october um and november i had not <laughs> i was not like earning any income from that source because I think I just got somehow bored with the whole thing. It was a little bit monotonous and I was not enjoying it anymore, so I stopped. And then the other source of income that I had was, of course, from my YouTube channel. It wasn't much. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't much, but it was a proof of the fact that uh, that is how I've been able to sustain myself uh, during those months, you know since i left my job in qatar so that is very important you might not have a regular job but that just make sure that there is something going for you either maybe you have a, a business somewhere and of course you will have to provide for a business i think they need like um official documents of the business that is like a certificate of incorporation or trading license of the business and they will need an original and a copy so <laughs> For me to provide like a proof of my employment or proof of my regular income, I had to print out my statement, you know, from uh, Google AdSense of my earnings over the month. And I just, I couldn't even print that out. So I simply took a screenshot on my phone and then uh, sent it to my email, then downloaded a PDF and provided that. And also it was very tricky for me to show proof of regular income for my online tutoring because I wish that when I started the tutoring, I had known that I would need to like provide proof at some point of uh, my, my income, my regular income. But when I did it, I was just doing it to fill up the void because I didn't want to just sit there and it's not very good to just sit there and you're using your savings without anything coming in you can get broke very fast so at least i needed something to come in to sustain me so that i don't suddenly deplete my savings and yet i knew that i was saving for a particular course so i had to gosh i had to take screenshots of every m-pesa transaction thank god 
I never received any like uh, payment in cash. It was by M-Pesa. That was something that just was a blessing. So I took one by one screenshots of uh, the M-Pesa transactions and then somehow in my own way I compiled them together and put them like uh, in a uh, one if or page and then printed them out they turned out to be like i think four or five pages i did that the good thing is that for my like for my students i had a whatsapp group that had all their names there so again i took a screenshot of the whatsapp group with their names so that at least the person that is verifying that information could see that yes this person's name is here and their payment actually is coming from them so you have to provide verifiable proof. Every information that you give to support your application, make sure there is evidence for it. Otherwise, you will find yourself in very hot soup. You will not even believe it. And of course, the next video after this one, I'm going to now be giving you my actual experience of the visa application of, uh, uh, my, of the visa application interview, how it went down. I'm going to be giving you that. But right now, I'm just telling you, if you're going to mention anything, make sure you have proof for it. If you're going to say that you're married, you better have documents to support the fact that you're married. If you're going to say you have children, better provide proof of that. If you're going to say you have a sister somewhere, provide proof of that. So just be careful with that. That's just something that I needed to mention at this point because I saw people swimming. <laughs> I saw people swimming during the interview. So yeah, that is what I had to do. And um, in case you are employed, then of course that is very easy if your employer is gonna allow you to take some time off work to go study and of course you will need to provide proof of how that study is gonna be useful either to your career or maybe whether you're gonna be taking up studies in germany later in the year so you need you will also have to provide proof anything again i have to mention this and i have to emphasize it anything that you mention provide proof of it justify it and let it make sense. The, the funny thing is that you will not find particular doc or particular requirements for a Schengen study visa. That is something that doesn't even apply. It doesn't like particularly exist. So it's very tricky. But at that point, after doing so much research myself, I came to understand what kinds of documents I would need. So at this point is where I had to obtain an original invitation letter from my language school of course in hamburg and um just take note of the fact that the embassy will not accept invitations via email or invitations uh from a printed pdr pdf from a printed pdf form they require original an original document that is stamped and signed by the school so the school has to send you this document via post and then you will provide it during your visa application last but not least is proof of accommodation if you're going to be hosted by somebody then they need to provide an invitation letter and uh, stating that they are going to be housing you and it has to contain their address their exact address of where they stay verifiable and also their phone number and stuff like that and in case you don't have maybe somebody that is hosting you so for my case i didn't have somebody that would be hosting me so so for me i went to booking.com and i booked a hostel there and i had to find a cheap hostel that had a reasonable price that when the visa officers would look at the amount that i would spend at the end of the three months then it would coincide with the act, the amount that I had in my account. Uh, it would show that I would be able to pay for my accommodation, food, and of course, uh, transportation and all other requirements that I would need when I'm in the country. And if you can pay for your accommodation in advance before your interview, then that would be even a plus because they will know that you actually have a place to stay and it would really be of help. Last but not least, I had to make provision of the visa application fees, which is 80 euros. And you should know that the 80 euros are non-refundable, whether or not you get your visa. 
and also that you will need to pay the amount in kenya shillings according to the exchange rate of that day so you have to make uh your do your research properly way ahead of time and make sure that you have more than it's required just in case suddenly the amount goes up so have at least 500 or a thousand extra once you're like making provision for the visa application fees so actually that those were those are the steps that i took to prepare for my visa interview and i hope you found this information useful to this point and the next video of course is gonna be now about how my experience uh during my visa interview the kinds of questions that i was asked and how everything went down to the point that i got my visa issued so thank you so much for watching and i will see you on another video bye